Hey there guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to take you on a tour of one of the coolest portions of my water harvesting system, and that's my culvert cistern you see just behind me. It's about 1,100 gallons, and while it's a small percentage of my total water harvesting capacity, I think it represents a great option for homeowners wanting to go from the standard 55 gallon barrel or the IBC tote into more of that medium to large water storage capacity. They can be built to whatever size that your situation needs. I've seen them as small as 100 gallons all the way up to 10,000 gallons. And <laughs> with that said, they can also fit with any budget. Uh, basically, as big as you can buy a road culvert for is as big as you can build one of these or as small. So uh, let me grab the camera. I'll take you on a tour of some of the features of it and how I built it. This cistern is comprised of an eight foot by five foot diameter culvert. It holds about 1,100 gallons, and I thought it was a good size because it could fit in a truck and be handled by just a couple of guys. The water that fills this cistern comes from two separate sections of gutter on either side of my garage. They run through a three inch PVC pipe over my garage window and on into the cistern. To screen out bugs, leaves, and other debris, I've used a rather technical feature, <laughs> an old kitchen strainer. You can see it's kind of rusty and not of that quality, but it's been working well ever since we've installed the cistern and I see no reason to change it. You'll also see two weights and a board on top of the cistern lid. Those are just there to keep the lid from vibrating during times of high wind. Going down the side, you're going to see my water level sight gauge. I made this out of an old soldering iron from my wife's great grandfather. It's a true level sight gauge in that it shows the actual level of the water versus the reciprocal level. I'll pull it down and you'll see it'll go back up to where the water level truly is by way of a counterbalance and a float mechanism. And if you'd like more information of how this style of water level sight gauge works, be sure and check out the link of my earlier video in which I show how I made it and how the mechanism works. Here's just a more detailed view of the pulley system for the counterbalance and the float. A closer look inside will show you that the counterbalance float is just a simple food grade jug. The white pipe you see coming out the center of the water is actually the overflow pipe. When the level of the water reaches the top of that pipe, all of the excess water drains down through that pipe and out to an area away from the slab so as to not cause settlement issues. The exit of overflowing water occurs at the end of this tree well. I have an end cap simply friction fit at the end and when water enters the overflow pipe, it just pops off on its own. At the end of this video, I'll show you it actually overflowing and where the overflow eventually goes to. And if you're wondering why I have an IBC tote just next to this culvert cistern, it's quite simply just for added capacity. It's raised up on some blocks, and when the cistern gets full, I simply transfer it from that valve down there with a hose to the top of the IBC tote. And for the hose setup, I've simply added a PVC ball valve assembly onto the end of a 90 degree threaded stub out. If I had it to do over again, I might not use PVC, but for my purposes currently, it's working well. And if I ever want to change it in the future, I can simply just take off that assembly and add whatever setup I do want. The foundation was composed of 2x8s and scrap rebar. I dug down the centers so that I would have a slab of approximately 10 inches, set my PVC, and then I poured in a soupy mix of concrete. My father-in-law, Les, was nice enough to help with the entire process as well as lend the hand of his work truck to help move the culvert into place. But if you don't have access to a truck like this, four reasonably strong friends, 2x4s, and some strapping can also move one of these culverts as seen in my video where I help my friend Jason 
install one of these cisterns. Once the concrete was fully cured, I finished it out with some liquid rubber on the inside seams and the bottom. And during a recent rain, you'll get a chance to see what the overflow actually looks like. With the culvert cistern and the IVC tote totally full, the water has no place left to go other than overflowing down to my fruit trees. It follows this little ditch on into a swale and then over to my garden area where my fruit trees are planted. There should be a video on this coming up soon as well. As always guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.